This is the Marconi Mark 8 uh, color plumbicon camera manufactured in 1972 in Great Britain. It's a very nice compact camera with a relatively small camera cable using the T1889 cable by BICC. Here's the front view of the camera uh, showing the uh, Veritol lens by Rank Taylor Hobson. This one is a 16 to 1 range and there were lenses available also from Angino with a different selection of uh, zoom ranges. A very nice compact camera and with many advanced features for its time. Proto byla taky kamera mezi techniky velmi oblíbená a díky svým dobrým parametrům sloužila až do konce 90. let. Here's the CCU with the waveform and picture monitor below it. There's the pull-out drawer. The Marconi Mark 8B. Here is the viewfinder with its controls underneath. At the rear carrying handle. And the small panel to the right is the intercom uh, controls that set the audio levels for the producer, and the CCU and the program sound. The focus drive to the lens is a mechanical one. Um, the cameramen at the time were very fond of that because it gave a very good feel for the position of the focus. The Veritol lenses by Rank Taylor Hobson were servo controlled and underneath this panel at the front is the servo amplifier uh, for the zoom and focus. Uh, and also the other cards for the electronics. Uh, there is the command decoder, tube supplies, the video viewfinder decoder, the talkback board, the scan auxiliary board, the camera pulses board, field scan and line scan. And to the right of those is the camera power supply. This takes the 180 volts from the camera power, the main power supply, and creates the voltages required for all the tubes and electronics in the camera head. The small board above the tube base is the decoder for the filter wheel, which is remotely controlled from the CCU position. The cues can be turned on and off and the potentiometers for the target voltages and the remote power on-off switch can, can be very useful for maintenance. This is the red tube, the red tube base and the beam alignment uh, motors and potentiometers behind. These form part of the auto alignment system. There is a convenient rear carrying handle the camera is light enough to be carried uh, easily by one person. Lifting the lid reveals the electronics in the top and dropping the Q-dome is optional. The green and blue tubes are here. The V-shaped boards are the head amplifier uh, for each of the colors. And from the front you can see part of the scanning yoke and to the right of it, the hour meter and the light bias controls. In the top of the camera, there are some triangular shaped boards which do the signals for the auto test feature. These inject signals into various parts of the camera video amplifier chain to aid in fault diagnosis. The zoom lens again from the front. Here is the main power supply. It's a linear power supply uh, except for one switch mode uh, device to power the camera. The main on-off switch and the 
monitoring switch which selects the parameter the meter is going to measure. The meter has got no numbers on it, just the three uh, coloured quadrants, uh, the green, the red and the white, and the needle should fall into the appropriate quadrant for the parameter being measured. There are quite a lot of different voltages required by the CCU. This is the top of the power supply with the fuses uh, to the left and behind them the capacitors. This is one of the regulator cards and underneath it are the main um, linear uh, pass transistors cooled by a fan. Uh, this card runs the single chopper uh, uh, thyristor uh, which um, sends the 180 volts up to the camera power supply. There are some spare fuses in the uh, left-hand front corner. The bottom drawer of the CCU pulls out to reveal the secondary controls in the top. And on the front, there's the local remote switch, the uncap switch, the tubes on switch, and the on switch. This is a soft on switch. The iris control the filter wheel uh, control and above it the on-air indicator and the black level control uh, which is known as a lift control in the UK and to the left of that the intercom uh, controls for the CCU operator. In the top there are controls for setting the colour of the camera, the colour trim controls and above it the picture monitor selector controls and the waveform monitor selector controls with the aperture correction control below, the parallel output button and the viewfinder selector buttons. The drawer then pulls out further to reveal the uh, secondary controls for beam focus, horizontal centering, width, vertical centering and height. These are for the green tube, an overscan button and the three beam current controls, one for each tube. There's a small switch uh, which enables you to set the levels of the beam correctly. This panel then hinges forward for maintenance purposes uh, to reveal the cards uh, underneath and behind. Uh, this one is the talkback uh, amplifier, the 2B3 board, and underneath it is the uh, monitoring uh, card which is driven by the buttons on the uh, front panel selecting the sources to go to the waveform monitor and the picture monitor. You can also plug a wandering test lead into this board, into those um, uh, wander sockets on the front, which enables you to uh, check various um, signal levels uh, through the video amplifier chains, a handy feature. This then closes up and slides back in. There's a little notch which enables it to settle at that point. The rest of the CCU has got pull-out drawers which reveal um, the electronics behind. The top one is the aperture corrector and below that the video A boards, the video B boards, the, the motors board and the automatic lineup boards. The color balance button, white balance, and these indicator lamps show the progress of the automatic lineup as it goes through the various sequences. The button to initiate the sequential lineup, and a button for dynamic centering, which can operate whilst the camera is in use, making uh, use of the information in the picture. In the top drawer is the aperture correctors and this is one of the delay lines uh, that it uses. The aperture corrector has the ability to switch different parameters uh, in and out, uh, vertical, comb and horizontal. 
and the in-band peak uh, can be switched in or out and the highs uh, in or out. <coughs> uh, there are some ordinary delay lines there and uh, adjustments for the rest of the aperture correction setup. Uh, it's quite detailed the setup for the aperture corrector. Uh, there's a second uh, one-line delay board underneath and some modulator demodulator cards. The signals go through the delay lines on RF carriers at about 27 or 30 megahertz. The video A cards are primarily responsible for correcting for losses in the camera cable length. Uh, there's a switch for the coarse camera cable length and an a veneer adjustment for the fine length. The small board in the center of the screen now is a daughter board which can be removed and exchanged for one with different capacitors in it to match the exact type of camera cable used. Uh, the black level and flare corrector controls and underneath the matrix board the matrix uh, has a fixed section uh, which is carefully calibrated to match the light separation block and a variable section which you can adjust uh, to match uh, different cameras which might be in use at the same time. These are the video B boards uh, which have controls on them for white clip and, big pardon, gamma correction. There is a complex wiring harness loom that goes to each of these pull-out drawers. Uh, it's a sort of gooseneck snake arrangement, but in practice it gives very little trouble. Underneath this tray are more boards, This is the multiplex uh, command coder board. The smaller board is the dynamic flare corrector board. And to the left of that, the pulse processing board. That goes back in to pull out the next one, which has the motors on it for the sequential lineup. The smaller of the cards on the left has the iris and red and blue gains on it, which is the first step of the lineup. Then we have the horizontal and vertical centering width, height, skew, twist, and horizontal linearity controls for the red and blue guns. The motors drive the multi-turn uh, potentiometers, which store the parameters uh, uh, driven by the electronics. A meter is provided for measuring the tube sensitivity and comparing the red and blue to the green tube. These are part of the registration uh, automatics, the 2D4 board, generates the auto test signals, um, similar to the ones produced in the camera, but these are injected at various points in the video chain in the CCU. Uh, these two little adjustments uh, take care of any differences between the lens optics and the signals from the built-in dioscope. The switch to control the uh, auto alignment. The line selector card. The sequence card. and the beam alignment card. All the electronics for the auto registration uh, is done in TTL. 
There's no microprocessor, it's an entirely a hard logic based arrangement. Here we have two cards for edge detection and above it a comparator card. And to the left of those two a gating card. These are all used to select out various parts of the waveform generated uh, from the built-in dioscope. The auto-balance card uh, is quite important in the system and requires careful adjustment to achieve a successful registration. Here's the front view of the CCU and the pull-out drawer. I do hope that you all have enjoyed this uh, video and we'll look at uh, part two also available on YouTube where I will explain about the automatics in greater detail.